Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. So excited to spend some time with you on this September the 20th. 2022 had a very very good and impactful weekend so let me just share a little bit with you uh, as we did share last week about uh, the word and the vision that God had given unto me about uh, making the paper broken to be created well we were able to donate uh, seven uh, 34 uh, and within a few days I had made 75 pieces of paper which is absolutely uh, just to God be the glory and so we were able to package and donate 34 pieces uh, to uh, ministry on Sunday during Women's Day to the visitors and some of the members and what I mean by packaged is each uh, piece of paper and they are in note size uh, pieces uh, a scripture was added to each one so different scriptures so we were able to package and give out 34 pieces we've actually already mailed out a few pieces and uh, it's a part of ministry so I thank God for allowing us to do that so excited and uh, for our covenant partners in prayer uh, some of uh, some of the distribution has already started. We've already started mailing out the Dream Kit. Remember I said for the month of September, during the month of September, we will be mailing out the Dream Kit. And the Dream Kit is uh, just information for your purpose, goals, and dreams. We totally believe in each and every one of you. Uh, the Dream Kit has information about procrastination, uh, it has a vision board. It has a little question section for you on the other side of the vision board. A notebook, uh, the three C's, the three P's. And also they're getting an extra little trinket of a gift in their packet. So those have already gone out. To God be the glory. You know, I absolutely love outreach ministry. <clears throat> absolutely love outreach ministry. So... Uh, we're going to do that in a little bit more as the Holy Spirit leads us for our covenant partners in prayer. So they are very appreciative of those individuals. And listen, it is not too late for you to become one of our covenant partners in prayer. All you have to do is email us. You can have a business or a ministry or you do not have to have either. Simply email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Once again, our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Every month, the first Monday of the month, unless that Monday is a holiday, we send out a newsletter for our covenant partners in prayer. Uh, we share... Uh, the other members and their ministries and or businesses uh, or if you just want to be a part of a network that offers prayer then guess what we welcome you 100 percent also i would like to share with you our magazine for this month is available uh, we're looking at building better lives that's right the topic for the month of September's Hope and Truth magazine is Building Better Lives. You can purchase a copy of Hope and Truth magazine via Amazon for $7 a copy or you can email us directly if you would like to do a yearly subscription. Our email address once again is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and our catalog is actually available as well. I'm looking on my bookshelf pulling out all of these awesome trinkets. Our catalog is available and the catalog has some products uh, that we have created from our store. It is the Collective 22 series and uh, we are already working on our next catalog. Catalogs will come out quarterly and so you can purchase a copy of the catalog via Amazon as well 
or uh, I believe during uh, the month of October and November, probably November, we're going to be sending out some free copies of our catalog. Uh, so stay tuned and you might have the opportunity to win a copy of one of our catalogs. So stay tuned and we will give you details. Also, uh, so let's get to our word. You who are followers of the balance of life, I am one who God has led, and I'm understanding it more and more. I'm not going to tell you that I've already, I've always understood the method to me, because I have not. I am understanding in part, and so that's some transparency for you. <laughs> I'm understanding in part, as the Holy Spirit will lead and guide me. So, dealing in spiritual warfare... I always thought, as a believer, that we all dealt in spiritual warfare. And and so I had this expectation when I was, you know, when I would converse with someone, and I'm talking about scripture and spiritual warfare, and and when they would look at me as if, what is she talking about? Um... I understand now because not everyone is called to that area, that front, front line area. And so the Holy Spirit would lead and guide me to specific scripture texts for spiritual warfare. And so I've utilized those. And I believe a couple of months ago, I was led to some other areas of scripture. And I understand by and by why. The enemy becomes so familiar with our methods and how we move. He studies us. And he knows our, if we are in a pattern, I'm going to say, of familiarity of fasting. Say, for instance... Um, if it's on your schedule every Tuesday to fast, well, when are we going to grow and elevate and shift? Because the enemy already knows every Tuesday from this time to that time you're going to fast. He's watching you. He's studying you. And so when we fall into realms of familiarity, strongholds are, are actually not being broken and cast down. They're not being destroyed because the enemy has learned our patterns and he knows uh, if your fasting time starts at 12, he's going to send a, a blocker, a beta blocker. He's going to send something in to block that fasting time. He's going to send in something to hinder. He's going to send something to distract you because he knows your set pattern are fasting and praying. He also already knows your go-to scriptures. He studies you. And so he knows how to send in a hindering spirit, how to block, how to distract. He knows how to do all of that because our patterns have become so familiarized so mandane they they have just become so static and there is no change in us and how we operate and so no wonder yokes are not being destroyed demons are not being cast out sickness is not leaving the body because those who are sent to intercede and to intercept in spiritual warfare we don't have a real strategic plan. We have become so comfortable and so uh, in a comfort zone in how we maneuver in prayer. Our prayers are still the same in surface. They're, they're not breaking any ground. We're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. We just have this same set pattern and the enemy has become familiar with it. If you want to connect that with scripture, then take a look over at, um, and we've shared this before, um, 
over in uh let me look at uh uh it's over in the book of kings so familiar that uh it is actually on my screen <laughs> all right don't allow the enemy to become so familiarized with you that you know you just there there's no movement so Alicia was instructed to warn the king about his movement and that's in second kings the sixth chapter eight through the 23rd verse so let's go over there So it says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. So the man of God, Elisha, had to warn the king of Israel listen your strategic move when you go into battle has become so very very familiar that the enemy already knows what you're going to do he already knows your playbook change your strategy and so what we're talking about today here um, your responses know you know how to respond know how to respond in spiritual warfare so that's one method change your pattern and reference scripture is second kings the sixth chapter uh read the whole chapter but the main points are in the eighth verse through and go all the way through read the whole chapter the main point is the enemy has become familiar with how you're going to respond in spiritual warfare if you're just tuning in you're tuning into the balance of life i am pastor angel ferguson and i thank you so very much for joining you today uh we're talking about how to respond how to respond with spiritual warfare there is a way to respond but we must not become so familiar in our methods we should not become uh just so uh content and doing it a certain way when is the last time we actually ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us when it comes to our method of spiritual warfare when is the last time I don't know about you but I don't want the enemy to become familiar with my method another way of responding is and you're not ready for this one hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle that's right hold your peace let the Lord fight your battle now in the instance of holding your peace letting the Lord fight your battle is when things are said and spoken against you and you know that they hold no truth they hold no bat no no value there are negative things spoken against you and so why do you need to say anything they're not true hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle there are several scripture texts 
uh, that we're going to look at concerning holding your peace and letting the Lord fight the battle. One is Exodus 14.14. 14. So let's take a look at Exodus 14.14. 14. All right, Exodus 14:14 14, 14 says, "The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace." Okay? The Lord will fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. This is a method, it is a response in spiritual warfare. So Exodus 14 and 14 is holding your peace. In this instance, once again, someone might have said something against you. It is a lie. It is not true. And why do you need to say anything? Let the Lord fight for you. Okay? Another one is, let's look at 2 Chronicles 20.17. 2 Chronicles 20.17 says, You will... You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. In this instance, they did not need to fight in the battle. He said to hold their position and see the salvation of the Lord. In this instance, all they had to do was go out for battle. They didn't have to do anything. They just needed to be there. That's standing firm as well. That's an instance in standing firm. So whenever we are faced with times of spiritual warfare, we must know how to respond. Oh, this is so good. So good, so good. And I think the Holy Spirit for leading me in this direction because I need it. We are supposed to grow in our faith. And that's over in Second Peter, the first chapter, beginning at the fifth verse, talking about adding to our faith. Well, I'm adding to my arsenal to my uh, my war chest I'm, 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 I'm adding I'm adding to it and I'm sharing these things with you as well another scripture text for us to look at let's take a look at and there are several I, I won't be able to give them all here but over the next few days I want to go and, and share more with you let's take a look at uh, Deuteronomy 3.22 It says you shall not fear them for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. Once again in the instance of holding your peace and letting the Lord fight your battle it is when negative things are spoken up against you uh, they are lies you know uh, they're not true even times when people try to uh drudge up your past and 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 they their mind is still there they still want to hold you there they're uh they're saying you know um this person is that that person is is this well you you did it okay you did it but you've been delivered you've been set free you are a new creature in christ jesus old things are passed away okay in those instances, when individuals have risen to say things about you, um, let your new life exonerate you. Let your deliverance be your victory. Hold your peace. Keep living in the newness in which you have now been brought into through salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You are a new creature. Old things are passed away. 
You have been renewed by the transformation of your mind. Your heart has been renewed. You have put away the acts of sinful nature. You didn't say you didn't do those things. But you have been delivered. You have been set free. And this is where you are now. And one tactic of the enemy is that he will send uh, a distraction where you are not focused on the now and what God would have you to do now because you are so busy defending things that people said about you. You are defending your character. You don't have to defend your character. Live. Let them say what they want to say. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Another scripture text. Hey, it says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So God has already sent out a warning. Don't touch my anointed. Cause my prophet no harm. He will cause your enemies to be your footstool. So you don't have to stop the work of the Lord. You don't have to stop studying the word to address. You don't have to come out of prayer. You don't have to come out of fasting. You don't have to stoop down. You don't have to lower. As as Nehemiah said, why, why, I'm doing a good work. Why should I come down? You don't have to come down to address those things. But stay focused. Keep doing the work of the Lord because you know what? If you and I were to pay attention, pay attention to the cycle uh, every three to six months or hey, if you're doing a really, really good work, it might come sooner than that. But periodically, the enemy will send someone around. He'll send a spirit uh, that will attach itself, that will get into an individual and cause them to uh, gossip and say all manner of things about you. Uh, and it comes in cycles to distract you. But I'm telling you today that we must know how to respond. Everything does not deserve our attention. Don't let it get in your mind. Don't let it get in your spirit. Stay focused on what God has called you to do. Keep doing the will and the work of the Lord and let him fight that battle. You hold your peace. Oh, I got to go back to uh, one of these scriptures texts. I have to go back to, I believe it's... Um, Second Chronicles 2017, it says you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Listen, that just got good to my spirit. Let me read that again. You will not need to fight in this battle. I'm talking about this particular battle. It is important to know how to respond per battle. Okay, we've been talking about endurance. And uh, on last Wednesday, we begin to share in Bible study, uh, giving God something to work with. Well, guess what? This right here is attached to that teaching series. God is so good. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position. And what is your position? I'm going to stay focused on what God is calling me to do, what he is leading, directing me to do, studying, fasting, praying as being led by God. And guess what? As I do that, I will see the salvation of the Lord on my behalf. Old Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Oh, this is so good. I thank you so very much for being a part of our ministry family here at The Balance of Life. All right. So let's take a look at a few other things. Let's take a look at Isaiah 54. Okay, 17. 
It says, no weapon, and this is the ESV version, no weapon that is formed against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication from me declares, said the Lord. Now, I want to look at this at the uh, King James Version. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And so once again, hold your peace. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. There is no reason for you to say anything no reason whatsoever here is another one these are all so good I pray that what we are sharing with you today is food unto your soul and a light unto your path as we are talking about how to respond do not allow your uh, time of prayer in accessory prayer, reading the word, uh, do, um, fasting, praise, worship, allow it to be spontaneous. What I mean by spontaneous is allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in these areas. Do not get in a ritual. Don't get in a ritual. If you have had a set day of fasting and it's for over an extended longer time unless the Holy Spirit has led you during this time frame okay and I'm going to say that even with this because I've experienced uh, a time I was on a fast for 60 days now during that time of, of fasting and praying for 60 days throughout that time the Holy Spirit shifted me in the time in the dates in the, in during that 60 day time so at a certain hour he would shift me what i was praying about what i was interceding about he would shift me the scriptures the rope the word that i was reading he would shift me it wasn't the same for those 60 days we must get to a place a pivotal place in which we are allowing the holy spirit to lead us and guide us when we allow the holy spirit to lead us and guide us in our time of prayer and of fasting even in our worship we are doing the will of God the Holy Spirit is simply relating the will of God for our lives and so I must have a desire for him to lead me do not allow your time of fasting and in prayer I don't know why I am in well I know why I am in this area is because listen I am the first partaker but I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to shake many of us up from having a ritual prayer life. It's become so familiar. It's become so traditional. And no yoke is being destroyed. Because we're mumbling the same words. We have gotten to a place that we are praying out of familiarity. We're fasting out of familiarity. What stronghold has been identified? so that we can cast it down so that we can destroy it what sickness has really been revealed what spirit has been revealed what revelation has come what growth has come about from the time of fasting and in praying what what came from it what were the results I'm telling you that when it's just familiarity, you're going to get the same o, same o, and that is nothing is being moved. 
absolutely nothing. Nothing is being destroyed. No life is being changed. And so that's why this particular word is always going to be a first partaker word. So I must examine, I must examine me. I must become more intentional about asking the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me when it comes to my spiritual warfare. And what brought this on is I've been studying the book of Exodus and I've mentioned this book before. I have the um, Rationale Bible on Exodus. And I came across a section, and I have it highlighted, I have it underlined. This is why I prefer books. As a publisher, I love to have the actual physical copy of a book. But I came across, uh, the author began to break down Moses' response when facing evil. It was a time of fighting back. Where something had to be cast down and destroyed. It was a time of speaking out. Speaking the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Declaring the truth. And then it was a time of standing still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hold your peace. And when I came across that, listen, it just really caught my attention. Uh, I believe that, and I picked this book up from time to time. Uh, I believe it was a few days ago, uh, last week. I felt my spirit was in a place of, of hunger. And it was as if I was searching for something. I needed something to uh, bring me, to pull me, to push me to another level. And so I begin to pray and I begin to say, Lord, what is it? Is it, uh, is it, am I going to come across someone physically that has a word for me that's going to minister a word and I hear it? Is it on the television? Is it on radio? Am I going to come across their live stream? Is it in a book? But you lead me. And I was led to pull this book off of my shelf. And I am so very, very glad that I did. We have to become intentional when you feel that urge, when you feel that pull, that your spirit man is looking for something, your spirit is hungry, God wants to feed us and he wants to feed us all the nourishment that we need. And so I, I'm coming into this area here of learning how to respond Knowing how to respond. Knowing what response to give. Because as we can see, some of our responses is simply hold your peace. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battle. All of our responses has to do with our faith. That is the foundation of every spiritual warfare faith faith in God and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us on what we're supposed to do all right so let's look all right let's look at another scripture text let's look at Isaiah 40 31 and the ESV version says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength for they who wait. Okay, for they who wait for the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For this area of spiritual warfare is for the individual who is just tired. They are weary of all of the fiery darts. They are tired of all of the sabotaging spirits. They are tired and it seems as if, uh, as with Elijah, uh, they are standing on the side of righteousness and it seems like the more that they stand, the more things seem to get worse and, 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 and the things that come up against them, uh, in area, every area of their life. 
And so it seems as if there is no sacred place that the enemy will attack. When we get to this place, we are to remind ourselves of Isaiah 40 and 31. Now we read the ESV version. Let's read the King James version. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So I must wait on the Lord during those times. I must wait on the Lord. I pray that what we're sharing with you is food unto your soul and a light unto your path. God is so awesome. Listen, I want to share with you uh, our book promotions for the month of September. The Keys of Promises. Keys that provide instructions along with the results. Through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we have gathered well over 60 keys of promises through various passages of scripture such as calling upon the name of the Lord is the key and here is what this key will unlock in your life we know that there are many more so we were committed to searching them out daily through this work study now the book is for a individual study or a group study priced at $15 per copy you can order a copy via Amazon uh, once again it has a reflection and review section as well as a commentary for certain sections also another book for this month the month of September is revelations of the sky it is a collection of photos uh, where I was led to take photos of the scri of the sky being led by the Holy Spirit and as I would take these pictures, the Holy Spirit will reveal something to me. So it is a gallery of photos. And we actually included uh, something that I, I was never in my thought process. We included a teaching section on identifying which prophets were actually seers. This particular book is available on Amazon for $22 a copy. It is all high gloss and full of photos in the gallery. All right, today we are talking about how to respond, how to respond in spiritual warfare. And this is so important to all of us where we are as individuals now as we begin to grow in our faith as we begin to mature then the holy spirit will guide us he is giving us tools according to the will of god as to where we are according to what we are facing and our maturity that's right we are given tools of spiritual uh, weaponry according to our maturity because and let me say this we have to be mature enough to hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battle that's right we have to be mature enough now not to retaliate not to go back and address things that have been said about us and against us we must oh God that is so good listen I have to write that down be mature enough to hold your peace When people are saying things about you and, 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 and listen, like I said earlier, uh, it could be a part of your past. You did do it, but you've been delivered or uh, their opinions about you. They're talking about you. They don't know the truth. They don't have anything concrete. They just have their opinion and they're, they're speaking it and they're sharing it with others. Uh, we have to be mature enough to hold our peace. We have to be mature enough not to go back and address it. We have to be mature enough not to say, oh, well, let me go and correct them and, and let me give them a piece of my mind. I must be mature enough to stay in my position because this isn't a battle I need to fight in. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. That's not a battle that I need to fight in. I just need to maintain my position. 
which is staying focused on God, which is staying focused on the kingdom of heaven, asking the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me on the work that I have been called to, to ask him to lead and guide me on the work that I have been invited to participate in all for the kingdom of heaven. And so listen, that's that's not a, a battle I need to fight in. Mm -mm. Nope, that's not my battle. Uh-uh. Nope. It deserves none of my attention. So, knowing how to respond, and I must write down the other high point, we are released. What, and I'm going to put a how to respond based off of our spiritual maturity. And we have to grow to this area because I'm going to tell you there was a time in my life that I would stop to address things. I would stop to correct things or I would um, go through the process of trying to prove you wrong by my actions and I would let my actions be very very loud well guess what I don't need to do that or I would uh if somebody indicated well you know ain't nothing to them she ain't doing nothing blah 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 I would do things I would go out of my way to prove to you that yes I am doing something I don't have to do that listen I know what I do every day all day and I often say I invite someone to step in my shoes I invite you to come and do what I do every day I do I want you to come do what I do every single day I want you to come uh, Tuesday through Thursday I want you to do radio I want you to do mentoring I want you to study for Bible study I want you to be the assistant pastor of a ministry as well I want you to be a publisher uh, I want you to maintain a magazine I want you to uh, you know do the store do the collective thing I want you to do all of that and then I want you to maintain your personal life. I want you to maintain being a mother, a grandmother. I want you to maintain family. I want you to do all of that. I do. I want you to do all of that. And so when you have that mindset of, listen, I got work to do. I don't have time to come down to address that you don't like me and, and that you said something about me. I don't have time to address that. That's between you and God. That's not my battle. So I believe over the next few days, we're going to take a look at different responses. Today, we really focused on holding our peace. And we share with you some scripture texts over in Exodus 14, 14, 2 Chronicles 20, 17, Deuteronomy 3, 22, Isaiah 54, 17, Deuteronomy 20 and 4 and Isaiah 40 and 31. I believe that is a good place to start. That's a lot. That is a good place to start. Start with allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Start there. How am I supposed to respond? If it's, once again, if it's something that's said against you, if it's words, someone's talking against you, um, why are you going to address that? Hold your peace. You know where you are and you know what your truth is. You know what you've been delivered from. You know what you've been set free from. And so don't come down from your position. Stay the course. Because that's not a battle that you need to fight in. 
as the Lord leads us, we will be back on tomorrow at 1230 to share more in this series, How to Respond. Be, be sure to tune in at 1230. <clears throat> See how the enemy is going to now aggravate my throat. But to God be the glory. All is well. All is well. All is well. By his stripes I am healed. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Know that I love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of you. Have a blessed day everyone.